Dr. Andrew Small, you've studied China closely. Uh, they have building, they are building their military exercise. They are pumping in a lot of money. Uh, Mr. Menon's argument is that it's largely financial uh, dominance, economic dominance that's there, and therefore they will not kind of be the kind of superpower that they'd hope to be. The, to be. What is your estimate of this? China's always understood power in comprehensive terms. It's, it's one of the few countries where they publish these regular indices on comprehensive national power. Um, the understanding has always been that um, you have to develop these things simultaneously. Economic power is a precondition um, for the totality of national power. And we have seen this shift um, it, on, on China's part from, yes, its top priorities are regional, but it has global, uh, global influence, global equities, and ultimately it does want to be a global military power. Um, I think that's become quite clear. And there is still a view on the Chinese side at the same time that you have to learn lessons from other great powers of the past. The form of Chinese global military power is not something that I think they believe is going to look like the United States. Um, take Afghanistan as, as one of the obvious examples. The view on China's part is not that they should have a militarily dominant role or presence in certain parts of, of, of continental Asia. The view is that's a trap on the areas of power that matter more. Um, and so I think you're going to see a different version of the form of power that China, China is that, that takes in the lessons from, from, from powers in the past, but, but that treats all dimensions simultaneously. And I think this is almost what you've seen from the US in the last period of time as well, a shift in understanding that, that, that also starts to think in comprehensive terms about what the competition with China actually amounts to. China was actually quite comfortable when most of the balancing um, efforts on the US part were purely military um, in scope. The shift to treat technology, economics, um, and all of the other dimensions of power as all part of the same um, competition in the last period of time has actually been what's given China much greater headaches. Um, because as um, Ambassador Menon um, says, there are still critical forms of dependence that China has. Um, there are still critical forms of dependence that China has, not least on US technology, um, as, as we saw when the US went after uh, Huawei. What you're seeing now on China's part, though, is an attempt to transcend those forms of dependency. They want to escape the fate of being interdependent or being dependent on others. What they're trying to do now domestically, what Xi Jinping's big push is, is, is essentially to make the rest of the world dependent on China while China itself is self-reliant. Um, to create a level of interdependence that's asymmetric um, in China's favor. Um, and and that's, that's a difficult task. There are trillions of dollars being poured, in, poured into this on areas such as semiconductors and other areas. They haven't got there yet. They know these constraints still exist. Um, but we're already on track, and we're, we're seeing how does China transcend some of the last of these limitations of, of, of dependence. Um, and that's, that's conditioning a lot of near-term and, and, and long-term approach that China's taking too.